Hello guys, S2W here as your average consumer with your casual consumer's review. For today's video, I decided to pick up a new sneaker release that in my opinion is left in the grey area. People who have been a fan of this sneaker has either already purchased them when the original OG silhouette was brought back this year in 2017. That OG silhouette was first released 20 years ago in 1997, and now 3 months after that re-release, now we've learned that Nike have rebuilt the design of that same shoe with more durable materials and updated technology to suit our times. Today, I have the new Nike Air Max 97 Ultra Silver Bullet here for a review. Now you can say that this shoe looks like a dad shoe or whatnot, but if I put myself back in the day when it first released, I can actually believe the futuristic theme behind it. Inspired by the sleek performance and futuristic look of the high speed bullet train from Japan and utilizing the footwear changing visible air cushioning element from the Air Max, the Air Max 97 can be regarded as one of the top favorites to many from the Air Max lineage. I missed out on the re-release of the OG when they retroed it 3 months ago, but I am glad to be able to get this revamped version of the Silver Bullet and join a new generation of people who had practically zero association with the first release, yet be part of it by owning a similar look with most importantly, modern updates to improve the comfort, fit, and feel of this model. So now, let's take a closer look at these sneakers. At first glance of this shoe, I would have to say it leans on the more bulky side of things. It has an outline that looks old, yet with curves that makes it look streamlined. For this upgraded model, Nike used a soft textile jacquard upper with shriek designs to achieve this, whereas the OG version is a fixed colorway with no patterning. The mesh and synthetic material lightens up the weight of this shoe compared to the original made with leather or suede. By touch, the upper feels quite sturdy and thick, which might not appeal to those who want a lighter, thinner, and flexible upper offered from knit materials. But when we do look closely, the weaving and pattern on this upper is actually very detailed. You have a silver metallic colorway for the majority of the shoe, with black accents popping in between it, offering a nice two-tone depth. Furthermore, because the knit is silver, when light strikes against it, it makes the sneaker a little bit more glossy and shiny like looking at metal. Now, the lateral and medial side of the shoe basically mirrors each other with a spot filled with diamond shaped weaving at the midfoot area with a small red rubber Nike swoosh to show off its branding. But the most outstanding decoration to this shoe must be the iconic 3M reflective detailing. For this updated version, this 3M track is adhered onto the fabric, rather than sewn into the material like the OGs were, replacing a lot of the heavier materials with lighter components. The 3M detailing basically loops all around the sneaker in a very smooth contour almost like a wave, and when light shines on this material in a certain way, they will light up as brightly as seen on these photos on screen. There is a total of 3 3M strips on the upper, 2 on the shoe, and 1 on the tongue. Speaking about the tongue, they padded this part really heavily. It's been some time since I felt such a puffy padded tongue as this, as it literally feels bloated and comfortable like a fluffy pillow. At the tip of this tongue, you will see another red on black Nike swoosh branding for this shoe, with a tongue tab that I presume is for looks more than for its actual usage. On top of this tongue is a grey rope lace with a nice and uniquely placed lacing pattern to accompany the curvature of the sneaker. At the back of the shoes, we have a heel tab extending upwards, with an updated Air Max text branding on the fabric. The text, although not 3M, is still silverish in color, so it does offer a little reflectiveness on its own too. As for the midsole, we have a foam midsole that seems like it's quickly painted on with white coloring. Not something that's particularly bad, as it does bring out the vintage look to the shoe in my opinion. Right under the foam midsole is the full length air cushioning unit that can be seen directly through the rubber window, iconic to the Air Max model lineage, which offers a lightweight and reliable suppression against the floor. For this updated model, they have redesigned it so that the air inside is not as pressurized as before, making the cushioning softer than the supposedly OG model. Inside the sneaker, there is a somewhat removable insole that you can take out that's in black with a red Nike swoosh on the heel area. However, there is some adhesive or tape under the insole so they would stick closely on the midsole, so I wouldn't remove them if I were you. At the inner heel area, it's basically a black mesh and slightly padded lining covering the back. It then transitions into a very smooth textile by the midfoot area and towards the front, and by touch it feels very silky. Lastly, flipping over the shoes, we will see an all black rubber outsole with waffle patterns, and various indents and outdents to make the shoes more durable and increase traction. Near the midfoot area of the outsole, we will see a red on silver Nike swoosh to give the shoe its last branding. 
Anyways, here are some Nike Air Max 97 Ultra Silver Bullet Fit Footage. Before I continue, I have to say I have never tried on the OG silhouette of the Air Max 97s, so I couldn't compare it to that and will be giving my first opinions on the Ultra version instead. Fit wise, I bought these at my true to size and they fit okay lengthwise. However, width wise, they are a bit snug on me. I would say it's still tolerable, but they do fit more on the narrow side. I'm already known to have wide feet, but I personally feel like true to size is good to go regardless. Upsizing half would work as well if you want a roomier fit, so if you can't find your true to size, upsizing half wouldn't be a bad idea as well. Comfort wise, it really depends if you're used to wearing bulkier and thicker shoes. I'm one of those who have been wearing these kinds of shoes since I was young, so I'm used to it. I think it really depends if you like the aesthetic of the shoe more. Would you want to sacrifice comfort to wear something more unique? I personally think yes, because I am one of those who really like the visual appearance of this shoe. Cushioning wise, not judging it in a hard way, but I personally didn't feel any compression on feet. It could be better than the OG models that I never tried on before, but just don't have high expectations for a soft sole. It's comfortable, but in another way. Price wise, these were 215 Canadian dollars before tax. Again, I'm not so sure if this shoe will sell out, as people who like the OG already got those and will only stick with the authenticity of that specific silhouette. Whereas this one feels more like it's made for those who missed out on the OGs but still want an updated version of that shoe. As always, throw me some likes if you like this video and let me know in the comments what you think about these new Air Max 97 Ultras. Were you a fan of the OG silhouette to begin with or do you not like these at all? Let me know. That's it for today, S2W signing off.